Between the savage East and forbidden West, amidst the ruins of the Old World, a thriving metropolis stands atop a great mesa, protecting its people from the machines and savages that roam the land. For generations, the Sun Kings have ruled over their realm from this holy seat and have expanded their empire across much of the land. A thriving center of technological enlightenment and economic power, the city known as Meridian serves as the capital of the Karja Sundom, its peoples and great works blessed by the sun. Yet it was in the savage east centuries past that Araman, founder of the Karja tribe, discovered hidden texts left behind by those known only as the Old Ones, and from these pages learned of the movement of the sun, of man's position within the world, and how to unlock the secrets of the written word. This ancient knowledge elevated the Karja above the other peoples of the region, yet they offered it freely to those they considered their brethren. Whether out of fear or jealousy for their growing knowledge and strength, however, these neighboring tribes attacked the Karja, driving them from their ancient lands. Araman and his people fled westward, searching for a new home. As they roamed the wilds, many members of the tribe perished in the harsh desert climate they found themselves in, and they remained beset by both man and machine. Amidst this great journey, Araman took what he had learned from the ancient texts and led his people by the light of the sun. His reward was a vision of a distant tower, shining on the horizon like a ray of sun itself. Guided onwards by a flight of mighty winged machines, these glinthawks finally perched upon this ancient towering structure that the Karja named the Spire. Shunned and feared by those without faith in the sun, the Spire was deemed to be a great holy place, and it was in its shadow that Araman said they would build anew. Atop a protective mesa, the Karja built a great city which they named Meridian, a word of the Old Ones to honor the noonday sun. The surrounding lands were lush and bountiful, and soon farms and markets sprung up to feed the growing capital. Great elevators, of a kind not seen in centuries, were constructed to link Meridian to the lands below. The city quickly became a bastion for the Karja, a place to take their harvests, sell their wares, and be safe from invasion. The prosperity of Meridian attracted foreign merchants and the city flourished. Within the Grand Palace of the Sun, Araman was named Sun King, first luminance of the Radiant Line. Araman and his descendants ruled the Karja Sundom as its supreme authority thereafter, with only the Sun King believed to be capable of interpreting the Sun's desires, which in turn had to be acted upon. Assisting in this were the Sun Priests, religious leaders who formed the highest caste in Karja society, with the exception of the monarch himself. The Sun Faith became a powerful force within the Sundom, extolling the Karja as highest among the tribes of men, the divine holiness of Meridian, and warning of a second time of twilight. To the Karja, Sun and Shadow represented dualistic halves of nature, and to deny one was to deny the other. The remainder of the Karja were divided between nobility, artisans, and commoners. Only the most privileged could enjoy the hospitality of Meridian, Separate markets were built for commoners, and few could afford to live within the city itself, instead returning to their homes in the surrounding village each night. For much of its history, the Sundom was fiercely patriarchal and xenophobic. Women were forbidden from serving in many positions of power, while foreigners were seen as primitives, fit for slave labor or ritual sacrifice. The need for slaves and resources drove the Karja onward, and over many generations, the Sun Kings expanded their territory. They pushed west, following the sun and going as far as they could before the machines grew too numerous and dangerous for safe expansion. The region beyond was declared forbidden, and the Karja reinforced their distant fortress of Sunfall to protect their citizens from the threats that lay beyond. 
to the east, they were met with fierce resistance from the local tribes of the sacred lands, and at the outposts of Day Tower and Dawn Sentinel, gates were erected to keep these savages, their former brothers, at bay. Successive Sun Kings ruled the Karja through the ages, great generals, hunters, and statesmen who echoed the triumphs of Araman in their own conquests and achievements. Yet during the reign of Sun King Jiran, 13th of the Line of Luminance, at the height of the Karja's power, the machines of the world grew aggressive and hostile, attacking travelers on sight and spreading terror throughout the Sundom. This derangement, as it was known, was interpreted by Jiran as a sign of the sun's displeasure, and he demanded the revival of ancient and horrific rituals to appease it. Meridian was stained with the blood of slaves, their lives offered as a sacrifice to quell the machines and satisfy the sun. Jiran's thirst for sacrifice grew bolder, and the Sun King ordered war parties be sent deep into the lands of the other tribes, namely the neighboring Nora and Osaram. In what would become known as the Red Raids, countless people were abducted and taken to Meridian to be massacred by machines in the great gladiatorial arena called the Sun Ring. For over a decade, thousands were slaughtered as the derangement spread to more and more machines and, some would argue, to Jiran himself. This practice was not blindly accepted by all members of the Karja, however. Many within the tribe grew disgusted, and tensions soon rose within the capital. Those who objected quickly found themselves amongst the victims of the Sun Ring. Even the venerated Sun Hawks of the Hunter's Lodge were not spared. When its members, led by Talavad Kain Padish, condemned the actions of Jiran, they were thrown in the arena, and their doomed yet courageous last stand ascended to legend. Perhaps emboldened by this display, King Jiran's own sons, Kataman and Avad, denounced their father and demanded an end to the Red Raids. To the shock of the Sundom, however, Kataman was executed and Avad fled the capital. In exile, Avad turned to the Asaram, a tribe renowned for their unrivaled craftsmanship and powerful weaponry for support. With the aid of the Asaram freebooters, Avad marched on Meridian, slew his father, and claimed the throne, becoming the 14th Sun King. The end of the Red Raids had brought with it a new era for the Sundom, and Avad himself has been instrumental in pushing for heavy societal reform. These have included abolishing the restrictions on women and foreigners, and both now walk freely in the upper levels of Meridian itself. As a gesture of goodwill, the Asaram freebooters have been granted a special place in the Karja army, renamed the Vanguard, and used as Avad's personal champions. Yet not all have accepted these new reforms, and the rumblings of a renewed civil war have spread across the land. Some still label Sun King Avad a usurper, and many Karja loyalists have fled Meridian to the Summer Palace within Sunfall, where the sacrifices have continued in their own Sun Ring. The Karja in Shadow, as they are now known, plot to retake Meridian, kill Avad, and replace him with their own candidate, Jiran's youngest son and Avad's half-brother Idaman. Yet real power is likely held by the Sun Priest Bahavas, leader of an extremist faction within the Shadow Karja, rumored to have unlocked the secrets of the Old One's most dangerous weapons. As the Karja struggle to reinvent themselves and gain the trust of the neighboring tribes they once preyed upon, the world remains a very dangerous place. The derangement that has affected the machines continues to spread, and their hostility grows with every year. In time, perhaps even those who seek shelter behind the walls of Meridian will no longer be safe. Yet even in these trying times, there remains a spark of hope. Word has reached the Sun King that a young woman from the reclusive Nora tribe has entered Meridian, and that she holds some strange connection to both the machines and the old ones, and may be the key to solving the mysteries of both. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.